All right, now let's look at joint costing. With joint costing, we're making two products from the same starting point. Two different products called joint products are being made, but they're being made from the same starting point. And they eventually split off and become those individual joint products. But in the beginning, they have what's called joint cost because they come from the same starting point. And the goal is to allocate that early cost, that joint cost, to the final products if two or more final products are produced from the same raw material or the same input or the same joint cost then we have to allocate that joint cost to the finished joint products so that early cost might be a cost of materials might be a cost of labor might be overhead cost they'll tell you on the exam that they spent this much in joint cost before you could recognize product A from product B and we're being asked to allocate that joint cost to the finished products. How much of that joint cost should we allocate to product A? How much should we allocate to product B? So it's going to be like a pro rata calculation. So those early joint costs are incurred up until the two products split off. The split off point is the point where the individual joint products become identifiable. The point where the joint products can be recognized is the split off point. That's the point where you could say, okay, here's the shirt, here's the sweater. When we first started the process, we couldn't tell what was shirt, what was sweater, but once they split off, we could tell. Here's the sneaker, here's the shoe. Once they split off, we could tell them apart. The joint cost is all the cost incurred prior to the split off point. So the vocabulary, the words that you'll see on the exam, all the costs up to the split off point are called joint costs. Then you have what's called separable costs. The separable costs are incurred after the split off. Joint costs are only applicable to the main products, product A, product B. If you see that there's a byproduct in the facts, don't allocate any joint cost to any byproduct. Only allocate joint costs to the joint products, the main products. If you see something's a byproduct, don't allocate any joint cost to the byproduct. Now there are several methods of assigning joint costs to the main products and we're going to go over the ones that are likely to appear on the exam. All right, the volume method is where we allocate the joint cost, in this case of $6,000, purely by what came out of the manufacturing process. Looks like 10,000 pair of sneakers were made, 20,000 pair of shoes ultimately came out. That's a total of 30,000 pair. So our volume is 30,000 pair. And if we're going to use volume to allocate this $6,000 of joint cost, then we're going to prorate based on 10,000 pair of sneakers divided by 30,000 total pair equals one third. And one third of $6,000 of joint cost equals $2,000. So $2,000 of the joint cost is going to be allocated to the sneaker. Now let's look at the shoe. The shoe, 20,000 pair of shoes divided by 30,000 total volume equals two-thirds. Two-thirds of the $6,000 of joint cost, or $4,000, will be allocated to the shoe. And this is how we allocate joint cost to our finished products based on pure volume. We call it pure volume because, notice, we don't care what the sneaker ultimately sold for. The 10,000 pair of sneakers might have sold for five times more than the 20,000 pair of shoes. But we didn't take any of that into consideration if we're just using the volume method to allocate the joint costs. All right, here's a question just like what you could see. Penrose Corp. manufactures two products from a joint process. The two products developed are product Q and product R. So Q is the sneaker and R is the shoe, two products. A standard production run incurs joint costs of $300,000. So that means before we even know what's a product Q and what's a product R, we've spent $300,000. And we've got to allocate that $300,000 to Q and to R. And they're going to tell us here to do it based on volume. It says the amount of joint costs allocated to R on a volume basis would be what? So we only care about total volume, how many Q's and how many R's were produced. 
it says that the joint cost of 300,000 resulted in 60,000 units of Q being manufactured and 90,000 units of R. So that's a total of 150,000 units of volume. Now they're going to give us some useless information. Watch this. Each Q sells for $2 per unit. Each R sells for $4 per unit. How do we know that's useless information? Because it's asking us the amount of joint cost allocated to R on a volume or physical quantity basis would be how much. If we're doing it purely based on volume, then we don't care about the selling prices. So they want us to allocate the joint cost to product R. How much of the joint cost of 300,000 gets allocated to product R? And it's based on volume. And they tell us in the facts that 60,000 units of Q and 90,000 units of R got manufactured. That's a total of 150,000 total units. So 60 over a total of 150 is 40% of Q was made. And that means 60% of R was made because 90,000 over 150,000 is 60%. So if 60% of the final units made were R, then we're going to allocate 60% of the joint cost to product R. 60% of the 300,000 in joint cost is 180,000. So 180,000 is the answer, and that happens to be choice A. They only asked for R, they didn't ask for Q, but we're always anticipating the next question. That's the I-75 difference. The next question they might ask, how much is allocated to Q and R? And you'd have to know that Q was allocated 120,000 of the 300,000, R allocated 180,000. Based on a pure volume, nothing to do with the selling prices. The selling prices were useless information because we were to use pure volume. Let's do another one. Marla Corp is a manufacturer of two products, X and Y, through a joint process. The joint or common costs incurred, those early costs, are $500,000 before you could recognize X and Y. And you'll get a standard production run out of that that generates 240,000 gallons of X and 160,000 gallons of Y. Total volume, 400,000. 400,000 gallons is the total volume. X, they tell us, sells for $4 per gallon. Y sells for $6.50 per gallon. We may or may not need that information, right? Because here's what they're going to ask. What is the amount of joint cost for each production run allocated to X on a physical quantity basis? What's another term for physical quantity basis? Volume. So purely based on volume, or physical quantity, how much of the joint cost of 500,000 gets assigned to product X. So once again, we're going to use the volume method and the total volume is 400,000 gallons. Why? Because they told us 240,000 gallons of X and 160,000 gallons of Y are the standard production run for 500,000 of joint cost. So just take 240,000 plus 160,000, you get 400,000, and then divide each by the total. So product X is the one they wanted. We'll take 240,000 gallons of X divided by 400,000 total gallons, and that's a 60% allocation for product X. So 60% of the 500,000 is 300,000. 300,000 goes to X, and that's letter A. While we're here, let's allocate to product Y. Product Y, if they would have asked, would have been 160,000 over 400,000, and that's 40%. And product Y, the answer would have been 200,000 or letter B. But they didn't ask about product Y, but we're always anticipating the next question. Okay, what did we do so far? We looked at the allocation method based on pure volume to determine how much joint costs to allocate to each individual joint product. And when we use pure volume based on 30,000 total pair, then we took each one divided by the total. And for the sneaker, we got one third. And for the shoe, we got two thirds. Now we're going to allocate that $6,000 of joint cost, not purely based on volume, but based on the sales price available at the split off. If you remember, 10,000 units of sneaker and 20,000 units of shoe were produced after incurring $6,000 of joint cost. 
And what we're going to do this time is take 10,000 units, 10,000 pair of sneakers, multiply it by the sales price available at the split off, which is given at $120 a pair. Well, that's a million two of total revenue for sneakers. And for the shoe, 20,000 pair times $40 price at the split off equals 800,000. A total of $2 million of revenue available at the split off. Divide each by the total, a million two for the sneaker divided by 2 million total is 60%. 60% of the joint cost should then be allocated to the sneaker. 60% of 6,000 is 3,600. So 3,600 of joint cost gets allocated to the sneaker. The shoe would be 800,000 of revenue divided by 2 million of total revenue at the split off equals 40% meaning that 40% of the joint cost should be allocated to the shoe. 40% of 6,000 is 2,400. So we now allocated 100% of the joint cost to the two joint products based on the sales revenue available at the split off. At the split off point, we could sell sneakers for 120, we could sell shoes for 40. And that's this method of allocating the joint cost to the joint products. Notice that when we use this method, the sales prices given are relevant. And that when we use the pure volume method, the sales prices given were not relevant. The facts of the question will tell you which method to use. And these are the two most common methods that the exam could ask you when it comes to allocating joint costs. Notice when we use the sales price available to split off, we came up with a 60-40 split. When we used pure volume and ignored the sales prices, it came out to one third, two thirds. All right, let's try this one. The STEM, it asks how much joint cost should be allocated to product X based on the sales price available at the split off. So we have the Expert Corp incurred joint cost of $1,000 for a production run that included two products X and Y from the same source. So now we have a joint cost of just $1,000 but we want to allocate it. How much to X, how much to Y. They ultimately produced 100 units of X with a sales value of 20 bucks at the split off and 400 units of Y with a sales value of 15 at the split off. How much joint cost, how much of the thousand dollars should be allocated to product X based on the sales price available? And if you think you know, leave the answer in the comments section below. And if you need more help with joint costing or any BEC topics, and you want to pass that CPA exam this year, where are you going to go? Go to cpaexamtutoring.com and get yourself on I-75, the number one CPA review supplement, where each video is taught by me, Darius Clark.